What's up, y'all? Welcome back to my channel. The time is currently 7.45 a.m. And I'm out here at the beach. <sighs> I'm at Tybee Island, but I'm specifically at the part of the beach where I got baptized. And I felt like it was important for me to come back here because there's times where I feel like a bit lost. But it's not lost in terms of self. It's like lost in terms of like what's going on around me. I feel like ever since like I lost my mom that I had this. I had that lost feeling. And I feel like the only thing that makes me not feel lost is God. Like every time that I feel near to God. That's when I feel found. <laughs> so I came here. I came here like to get back to the start, like to the beginning. Because I don't want to cry. But I mean, I feel like my mom was the beginning. Obviously, my true beginning. And she's gone so my true beginning is gone so i have to come to where god made me brand new again and i feel really at peace here i feel like everything is gonna be okay here and i just know that i'm not alone when i came out here I invited the Holy Spirit into my heart and I wanted to read whatever chapter in the Bible that was like meant for me. I always pray to God and ask God when I'm about to read my Bible. I'm like, God, take me to whatever is for me. And God took me to Psalm chapter 107. It was really interesting is that multiple times throughout this chapter, there is a verse that says that they cried out to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. It says this multiple times in this one chapter, just maybe about four or five times, it says that same exact thing. And then in Psalm 107, whew, Psalm 107, chapter like 24 through 29 God starts talking about stilling the storm to a whisper and making the waves of the sea hushed we just gonna give a moment of silence for that I forgot to say that when people cry out to the Lord in their trouble he delivers them from their distress Whew. and that the waves of the sea Nothing that could convince me that God is not here for me. Like that God is not putting me exactly where I need to be. So when things seem confusing, it's just times like this where it's like, I know that seeking God is the right thing to do. I feel like a lot of times I used to seek people and I used to seek substances for comfort, but those things never truly comforted me for real. Whew. And I came here to make this video as like a life update for you guys because I feel like a chapter has closed, like an era has ended, and a new era has begun, has begun, 
or is beginning and it's like speaking of substances we obviously know that i can't say too much for certain reasons but i think we all can guess the substance that a lot of us draw near to when we feel like when we feel like we're in distress or when we feel like we need peace or when we feel like we need to be calm that substance that we inhale and exhale I feel like I was running to that ever since I was 14. I used to be so proud of that habit. I used to say it was a habit that I was never going to break. That it was something that I was never going to stop doing. But I declare that I'm never doing that again. And I know that only God's strength will help me to never do that again. Because <sighs> I know that I can't only rely on my own strength. But it's been two solid weeks now that I just had a complete sober mind. And I feel, I feel good. This is not my first time having a sober mind. Back in 2022, I was sober for almost seven months. And I can say I was the best me that I ever been. Like, I never felt so good in my life. I never felt so proud of myself. Like, I never felt like I was progressing at such a fast speed other than that time in my life. And it's like, like I said, it's around the time that I can baptize. It was just a great time. And I'm going to get back to that. Whew. So that's one part. That's one part of my life. That I'm just... I'm really done with that. Like I, I don't feel proud. I mean, I feel proud of where I, where I came from. I feel proud that I did that for years and years and years, and I was able to be delivered from it. I feel very proud about that. Whew. But something else that I feel proud of is I took a big step. I took a big step to let go of something that I have been holding on for unnecessarily, y'all. I feel like I have been holding on to my relationship for the wrong reasons. I feel like I was trying to prove to myself that I could be strong and that I could hold on because I'm usually the type of person I give up. When it comes to people and situations, I'll give up. I'll stop talking to a person. I'll block a person. And I really just be having peace in my mind, in my heart, that I'll never talk to that person again. And something about that doesn't sit right with me anymore. But I didn't understand the right way to go about it. It's like I knew that I wanted to stop being that type of person. I wanted to stop sitting right with my heart to ignore people or to block people out and, and feel like I was never, ever going to talk to them again. I knew that that wasn't right. But I felt like the way that I had to, like as I'm was on this new journey and try to do things differently I feel like the right way to do that or I felt like at the time that the right way to do that was to put up with stuff because like that was that was my idea at the time of just like sticking around but I see that there's no value in sticking around in situations that don't feel that don't make me feel centered that don't make me feel peaceful I don't need to stick around in situations that don't feel like they're from God. And I feel like nothing from God is confusing. Like, do y'all see like how God just made this so plain? Me reading this chapter, the wind, the literal wind, y'all. Turning the pages to this Bible to where I needed to see. There's nothing confusing about that. And I feel like my relationship was so confusing and it was so unsettling. And there were so many times where I did not know peace in that relationship, but I just was sticking around. And I will be honest with y'all, a situation happened. Whew, a situation happened that caused like both of us to be in a situation where we didn't want to stick around anymore. Because I will admit that I was starving. Like, I was really starving. I knew, I knew that I wanted better. And I knew that I needed to separate myself. Like, not in terms of just never talking to him again. I needed to separate myself so like, that I can have peace again. It's like when a person is...
what you feel like is your peace you can't necessarily stick with sign that <laughs> you can't necessarily wait around for some something bad to happen or something weird to happen because i felt like that was what i was doing i was just like god just make it happen god just do what you're gonna do or whatever and i felt like after a while that just started getting harder and harder like me waiting on God to make something happen it just started it started getting harder so I feel like he got to a place that he wanted things to happen he said that he wanted to go on a break after two weeks of being on a break I just started like I just started being free with everything that I wanted to do and I feel like something that I wanted to do was apologize to somebody I definitely owe that person an apology. I owe them a huge apology. And despite me being in a relationship or me being on a break or whatever you want to call it, I was granted an opportunity to have a conversation with that person. Like a conversation that had nothing to do with me apologizing to them. So I felt like it was only right. Like it was only right that I just take that. I take that time. I take advantage of that time to apologize to that person. And this person is a very, very, very dear friend. And this person is a man. And I just, despite what I knew would, what I knew would make my partner uncomfortable at the time, I did it for me. And I know that that's something that everybody may not understand, and it's not something that I need people to understand. Like I said, I just took my opportunity. And throughout me taking my opportunity there was nothing weird or spicy going on <laughs> with the conversation with the man like it, everything was just very genuine and me and the man decided that we were going to be friends so in a matter of one week y'all in a matter of one week of me and the man being friends uh, my ex or my boyfriend at the time he found out that I was talking to the man basically and that obviously set him off. And um, I tried to explain to him, like, this ain't that. Like, I'm not a cheater. I'm not a liar. Like, I can be lying things, but I don't be lying. And I don't really have no reason to lie. So I told him exactly what I just told y'all. <laughs> and he didn't necessarily believe it, but that was to be expected. Or he may view it as like, I don't know what the hell he view it as, y'all. But I really, I can honestly say I don't care. Because I have peace in my heart about what I was doing and why I was doing it. But I feel like that happening the way it did, it just led me to an opportunity to say like, you know what, we're totally just going to let this go. And you said that you wanted to be on a break. I don't even know what the hell a break consists of. I was just going along with it. Like I said, just trying to stick things out, going along with it. But that situation happening, I'm like, this is this is a perfect time for us to just like end things here. Because like things are only gonna get worse. Like if you think that I'm cheating, things are already bad. But if you think that I'm cheating on you, things are gonna get worse. I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna just go through a state of being condemned and being treated like I'm no cheater. Like no like i said we were already going through enough like anger and resentment was already very 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 present in our relationship the whole theme of our relationship was resentment i feel like we had a lot of good times and at times he was a really good friend to me and we got along very well personality wise but, but when it came to his actions and when it came to my actions it's like we were always disgruntled with each other when it came to things that I wanted to do. He kind of just like, why are you doing that? And when it came to things that he wanted to do, I would just be like, why are you doing that? Like, we just weren't aligning on certain parts of life outside of personalities. And 
I learned from this relationship to stop forcing stuff. Like, me and my boyfriend or my ex-boyfriend, whatever you, you want to call it, we dated on and off for two years. And we tried to get in a relationship for two years. And we got to a point where we kind of, like, forced ourselves to be with each other. And then it was, it was exactly that. It was for us. It was beautiful. And I was happy for it because it was what I wanted. Like, I know y'all know as women, like, when things not working out with a man and you love that man, you like, this my man. <laughs> like, this my man. And it's like, this is what it is. And that was, that was my stance. That was my tone for a while. But that's not my man, y'all. Because that situation was entirely too confusing. Like I said, it wasn't all bad. There were really amazing times. Times where he made me so happy and times where he made me feel so comforted. But there was also times where he made me feel so disturbed. He made me feel so unhappy. And I just, I don't have to. So that chapter ended, y'all, and I'm happy about it. I know nobody understands. Everybody's like, girl, what is wrong with you? Like, is you good? And I'm like, yeah, I'm really good. It's like my friends and my family, they keep checking on me, and they're like, I mean, you don't have to act like you're good if you're not good. And I'm like, I'm good. And this will help segue into the next thing that I want to talk about which is my mom. When my mom passed away, y'all, everybody kept telling me, like, you don't have to act like you good. You don't have to act like you good if you're not good. Like, why aren't you reacting? Like, something, a big theme in my life is, like, I realize that people want me to be reactive. And it's very obvious that I've changed and I've stepped far, far away from the reactive person that I used to be. So I know that's what people like that's what people expect out of me but I really don't have any reaction for for anybody if I react to anything it's going to be for me you know and around the time that my mom passed away I just didn't feel and that's just a sentence in itself like I just didn't feel like at the time Everything just, I just couldn't feel it. And I don't know how to explain that to y'all, but it's just like, my mom, she passed away on a Monday morning, on August 29th, 2022, and just a regular day, or what I thought was a regular day. anymore because I feel like I made my biggest mistake by being angry so like moving forward in life all that being mad all that being reactive all that just leading with my emotions I'm done with that and it's like if people can't relate to that then they just not gonna be able to relate to me. I don't have to put my feelings on display for them to be real. And when I'm ready to feel my emotions, I feel them. It took a really long time for me to start grieving my mom. Like the whole first six months, y'all, when I tell y'all that I did not feel like I did not feel like my mom died, like I really felt like 
I'm not gonna say I feel like it was a joke, but like my mom came to me in my dream like a couple months after she died. <laughs> my mom was a really jokey person, y'all. Like very, very, very jokey, very fun, very lighthearted. So she came to me in my dream and she said, I'm not dead. <laughs> I wanted to tell y'all that I was okay, but y'all had the funeral and everything, and everything just went so far. I just didn't know when to stop it. And she was laughing the whole time she was saying this, y'all, like, right, like, right hand to God. And I woke up, and I was like, what? She not dead. I'm <laughs> like, girl, if you ain't dead, where you at? <laughs> up coming to me a couple more times in my dream one of the times she came to me I got into a car accident but I was in the back of the car I was in the back seat I wasn't even driving and there was this time my mom was coming to me in my dreams I had a baby like a little baby like a little baby girl and in all of my dreams, like, I was guarding this baby with my life, y'all. Like, no matter what was going on, I was guarding that baby. And I still, like, don't really know what's up with the baby. But the car wrecked, and the car wrecked inside of a pond, like, inside of water. And my mom, she pulled me and the baby out of the water, and she said, that everything was going to be okay. And ever since then, I've been believing her. God has been reassuring me that everything was going to be okay. Because months after my mom passed, that's when God came to me. That's when I physically felt God's presence God came into my room <laughs> and God I felt God literally wrapped his arms around me God Ooh. let me start over I physically felt God's presence the Holy Spirit led me to I didn't quite understand, like, it is why Dietrich had it. I didn't really understand, like, I was just sitting quiet. And I usually don't sit quiet when I'm in my room. But I was just sitting in there. I wasn't scrolling on my phone or nothing like that. And, like, the Holy Spirit told me to play the song behind Dietrich had it. And I played the song. And y'all. changed my life like God literally came into my life God came into my room like I felt the Holy Spirit I physically felt God I physically felt God like somebody coming like to hug you from behind like this literally and I felt God's hands like literally I felt the physical presence and I know it's something that everybody is not going to understand and I know some of y'all may just be like girl what the hell and it's just like that's fine like that's completely fine but I know what I know I know that I felt the presence of God that day and I know that I felt the presence of my mom when she came to my dream it was her y'all and like I said if you don't understand you just don't understand this video is literally for everybody that do understand. You get what I'm saying? God told me that everything is going to be okay. And my mom told me that everything is going to be okay. So I genuinely believe that. And when I'm going through stuff, I just lean back on that understanding. Like, I lean back on what God told me, what God has been telling me. And I lean back on and today is the day 
the Ram family. Angry with her anymore. That's not true. I would be lying if I said that. I was still angry with my mom. And I felt at peace with her death. And it took me a while. It took me a while to get there, y'all. For a while, I was stuck on that dream where she said, like, I'm not dead. And I'm like, Mom, if you're not dead, where the hell are you? Where the fuck are you, actually? I was mad. I was like, Mom, why would you leave me? Really big step, y'all. I've driven to Savannah. This is my fourth time coming to Savannah saying that I was going to come to this grade. But when I leave this beach, y'all, I'm going. Let me talk to my mommy. Been like this new chapter of my life. I'm bringing y'all back with me because <laughs> I left y'all in the dust for a while. I just didn't have the capacity. I was figuring things out. I was figuring stuff out. I was figuring that relationship out. I was figuring out other relationships, friends, family, and I just I couldn't bring y'all with me at that time. But I'm bringing y'all back with me. I just hope that y'all forgive me for leaving y'all and I can't necessarily promise y'all that I will never leave y'all again because I have to do what's best for myself and I have to follow my heart and when my heart leads me to pick up this kid I'm gonna pick it up and when my heart leads me I hope that you guys are excited. I feel like I came up with a name for y'all. It's not an original name at all. <laughs> I feel like everybody is saying the girl least right now, but I feel like I'm Earl the girl. And I feel like I'm the girl. So y'all are the girl least. And if you a boy, you fit into the Earl part of the girl least. G E A R L I E S. You just fit into the Earl part. That's what it is, okay? But everybody's welcome. The men and the woman. Y'all the girlies, though. So, I hope y'all girlies is ready for the journey. Because I am. I'm really excited. I think that my life is really about to change. My life has been changing. God has really been in line with everything that he's been doing. He's been blessing my content extremely. And I know that this is a Before I end this video, I want to give a special shout out to Akila. Although this is where I got baptized at, and I know that I wanted to go to God, her each video to come here and just talk. Like, it, it really, it really did help. Like, I have plans of coming here to be silent, but seeing Akila come here 
and talk. It inspired me to come here and talk. So I'm gonna add her channel here. I want you guys to check her channel out. She's such a beautiful person. She's such a beautiful woman of God, just like me. And I love her. So I didn't want to end this video without saying that.